So I am going to read this article that I posted for your assignment on Wednesday uh, the 16th. And I'm going to read it in case you'd like it read to you. So inventors and scientists Alfred Wagner and Harry Hess. So here's a picture of Alfred Wagner. And they give you a synopsis of the article, so a kind of a short version of what sums up the article. And it's Alfred Wagner showed evidence in 1912 that the continents are moving. Scientists rejected his ideas at first. After all, Wagner was not a geologist, a scientist who studies the, what the earth is made of. He could not explain the forces causing the continents to move. Almost 50 years later, Wagner's ideas were per proved to be right. Harry Hess found evidence of the ocean floor spreading. He used it to explain what moved the continents. Balloons and Arctic air. Alfred Wagner was born in Germany. He studied the planets and space in college. However, his real love was air balloons. He and his brother set the world record in 1906 for the longest time spent in a balloon. They floated through the air for 52 hours. Later that year, Wagner joined a, joined a trip to Greenland. Greenland is a large island near the North Pole. Wagner would use his experiments, or sorry, his experience with air balloons to study the polar air. He had always dreamed of exploring the Arctic. Continental Drift. Wagner worked as a meteorologist, a scientist who studies the atmosphere. We might call him a weatherman. He was very respected for his work, yet his mind kept roaming. Looking at a map, he noticed that the east coast of South America fit exactly against the west coast of Africa. It looked like they had once been joined. In 1915, Wagner published The Origin of Continents and Oceans. In the book, he said that millions of years ago, the continents all formed a single mass. He called the supercontinent Pangaea, a Greek word that means whole earth. Wagner was not the first to present the idea of continental drift, but he was the first to pull together evidence from different scientific approaches. For example, he found ancient tropical plants on an Arctic island. These plants were thousands of miles from where scientists would expect to find them. Wagner also found rocks on different continents that were alike. He found some in South America that matched those in Brazil. He believed this was proof that the continents had drifted apart over time. Geologists made fun of Wagner's ideas. Wagner was not even a geologist. Who was he to challenge their ideas? In 1930, Wagner led another trip to Greenland. He celebrated his 50th birthday there at an isolated weather station. Tragically, on his return, return trip back to the coast, he died. Seafloor spreading. Scientists kept talking about the idea of continental drift. During World War II, sonar technology produced new evidence of what the ocean floor looked like. Sonar works by bouncing sound waves off the seafloor. When the sound waves come back to the ship, objects in water can be heard. At the time, Harry Hess was in charge of a military ship. He was a geologist. He wanted to continue his scientific studies even while at war. Ship commanders usually only use sonar when docking a ship. However, Hess let the technology uh, on all the time. What he discovered was a big surprise. The bottom of the sea was not as smooth as expected. In fact, it was full of canyons, valleys, and volcanoes. By the late 1950s, scientists knew much more about the ocean floor. They discovered an underwater mountain chain called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The ridge had a valley down the middle. Each side of the valley was moving away from one another. This discovery helped Hess. He now knew that the Earth's crust had been moving away on either side of the ridge. Hess published his theory in 1962. It came to be called seafloor spreading. Hess went on to help plan the U.S. space program. On August 25, 
1969, he died of an, a heart attack. It was just a month after the first humans landed on the moon. Plate tectonics. Geologists today understand that the Earth's crust is broken up into different sections or plates. There are 8 to 12 large plates and 20 or so smaller ones. The plates move in different directions and at different speeds. Their sizes do not match the land masses on top of them. For example, the North American plate is much larger than the North American continent. The plate starts at the western coast of North America, yet it extends into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Iceland is split down the middle. It belongs to two different plates. The force that moves the plates is thought to be currents in the Earth's mantle. The mantle is an area below the crust. Part of the mantle is hot liquid from melted rock or magma. Over long periods of time, the mantle flows very slowly. Plates float along the top of it, along mountain ridges deep under the water. Hot liquid mag magma escapes from the mantle. It bubbles up and then cools into rock. Where the edges of the plates meet, several things may happen. Continents are lighter than the ocean floor. If the two plates both carry continents, they might crash together. Mountains rise up where they meet. If one plate is heavier, it might go under the other, or the plates may grind against each other, forming cracks. When plate edges meet, earthquakes take place. The European and North American plates are moving apart very slowly. They are moving at the speed that a fingernail grows. Millions of years in the future, parts of California and Mexico will probably drift off. They will become their own islands. Over time, the Earth's plates are always moving.